Hello guys, this is Caesar Creates, and welcome back to my channel. It is time to add the last animal from the new Twilight pack to the Elm Hill City Zoo. I cannot believe that we've built for all of the five new animals. Uh, this is so unusual for me, but they were all like a perfect fit to our zoo, so uh, I could find perfect spots for them. And yeah, now we have all of them in our zoo. And the last animal that we are building for today is, of course, the common wombat. The wombat is the most exotic, at least for me, a habitat animal added to Planet Zoo with this new pack. Uh, and of course, I wanted to build something different for it, as it is a uh, marsupial coming from Australia. Uh, we've been building more of like those very like temperate inspired, like foresty uh, habitats from the previous animals. And today, I wanted to go for something completely different, uh, something more like bushy like grassland or even desert and spot inspired to sort of like mimic their natural environment of course i saw that they also live in normal like temperate forests in australia in australia but they live in the range of different environments and i wanted to build something different for them and i had this idea to play a bit more with the new stalactite pieces to show you guys how versatile they are even though I've been using them a lot in my previous builds, this time I wanted to go a little crazy, uh, more crazy with them and create something really beautiful. And in the end, I am really happy with what I was able to create. I of course have found some uh, inspiration online on Pinterest for habitats with like a stone or rock uh, walls in the background or something like that. And I went for like a mixture of different things. So the whole outside part of the habitat will be surrounded by the rock formations that were created using the stalagmite pieces and in some areas there will be a glass panels just to give the guests a better view inside of this beautiful habitat. I must say that I went a bit overboard with those stalagmite pieces. This whole uh, rock formation in the end will be around like 1500 of them. So yeah, quite a lot for our Elm Hill CD Zoo that is lagging already and I am just being myself adding more and more of those pieces, but I just can't not help myself while building those habitats so I hope you guys won't mind a bit like a laggy cinematic shots by the end of this video uh, we were also building this uh, habitat in sort of like an unfortunate place because it is in the middle of the zoo and I noticed that I am when I'm building something in the middle uh, and then the game needs to render all the things that is behind the habitat that I've just built of course it is a bit more laggy and when I am building in place Places where we still didn't have a chance to build anything is quite fine uh, but yeah the placing of this habitat really didn't go well with the FPS and uh, yeah it's kind of laggy but I hope you guys will uh, still like the cinematic shots. And when it comes to the placement of this habitat, some of the original viewers, I know who you are, I know your names, I know who is always commenting under my videos, uh, those original guys who are with me from the very beginning will remember a project called a small mammal house that we did sort of like an, on the beginning of my channel. Uh, the small mammal house houses the koalas, the red pandas, the giant otters, the aardvarks and the pangolins the wombat to be honest would be a perfect like a perfect match for this house to be added unfortunately we don't have a space to like i don't know make it bigger or to add them inside it is just completely filled with animals so i decided to uh, like house the uh, wombats next to this house uh, and also we have the dingoes nearby we have the koalas so it's so sort of makes sense to uh, for the 
wombats to be housed in this particular area of the zoo. So I was able to find this perfect spot next to the small mammal house and uh, sort of next to the wildcat house that we've been recent recently working on. Uh, and because I added this uh, new habitat in this place, I was able to connect those two big projects together. So now we have this like big sidewalk, big pavement com connecting them and uh, yeah, this just helped to tie the things together. We still have some space for a new habitat in this like uh, area of the zoo. So for example, if they will add emus or <laughs> any animal like that, we'll have a space for it next to the wombats or opposite to the wombats. Of course, I will try to show you guys the exact placement of this habitat in the cinematic shots by the end of this video. I will do a couple of shots from the like above, like from the bird's point of view, if you call it that way, I don't know. Uh, so you uh, will be able to see where this habitat is exactly placed. As you guys can see, I am still working on this huge rock formation uh, because it was simply so many pieces. I just wanted to, to make it look uh, like very smooth, but still in this like very interesting shape. Uh, but I didn't have to, I didn't want to have any like sharp edges that that's why I had to add so many pieces at the top uh, to make it look a bit more like smooth. But in the end, I must say that I am so, so happy with this rock formation. It looks even better than I like envision it in my head. So uh, yeah, this is definitely my favorite part of this entire habitat. And I love how well the glass pieces and you know, the glass panels uh, look like combined with those uh, rock formations. I think this is like a typical modern zoo habitat. I mean, when you see those very like recently built habitats in zoos, they sometimes uh, use those uh, fake rock formations and they put glass in there and yeah this is something that I wanted to go for so we need to think of that habitat as one of the newer ones added to our zoo I mean the wombats are not so popular in uh, uh, European zoos uh, we don't have too many wombats uh, as far as I'm concerned in Europe uh, so again the Elm Hill City Zoo is a bit special uh, for housing them and uh, we have the platypus, we have the wombats right now. Uh, so of course we wanted to have a really nice and modern habitat for them. Okay, but let's briefly talk about some new Planet Zoo news. Can news be old? Probably, yeah. I don't know. New news? Can you say that even? <laughs> I think so. I don't know. But there are some new news about Planet Zoo anniversary. Uh, so we have uh, on Thursday, uh, I will be probably uploading this video on uh, Wednesday. So a, a day after this video will drop, we will have a special live stream for uh, Planet Zoo anniversary. I will be there for sure. So I hope I will see you guys there in the chat uh, to say hello if you'll see me there <laughs> it'll be so fun to talk with you guys a little bit more uh so yeah this is very exciting because uh there will be some special guests i'm guessing they invited some of my fellow content creators i am very curious who it is who was who was invited who are those lucky persons or maybe those are not content creators i don't know but this is something that i sort of predict uh so uh, i'm guessing if we'll get some new like uh, anniversary update as we got last time, a free animal, a free shop. Uh, this is also exciting, so I cannot wait for it. The plan, the new live stream will be, I think, three hours. So this is quite, you know, uh, a long one. Uh, we'll see what they will came, came up with. So uh, yeah, I cannot wait. Uh, again, I cannot wait to see you guys there. Uh, so if you'll see me, definitely say hi in the chat. So yeah, those are the news. Uh, I cannot believe that Planet Zoo is already three years old. Uh, I've been playing this game for three years. This is just mind blowing. Uh, my channel will be two years old uh, soon. So uh, I was sort of like a late bloomer. 
<laughs> I wasn't uploading my videos from the very beginning of the game. Uh, but yeah, I've been playing the game definitely from the first day that it came out. I unfortunately wasn't able to play the game during the beta days where I think that the excitement for Planet Zoo was the biggest ever. Uh, all the content creators who uploaded their videos from that time got massive like amounts of views and so on. Uh, so this was so, so amazing to see. I was back then in United States. Yeah, I was in the United States for three weeks. Uh, I was in New York with my partner and we were like exploring the East Coast of the United States. So obviously I wasn't able to play but I remember like watching some of those videos where uh, we where we were driving from one state to another and so on uh, so yeah I remember the excitement but I couldn't play but after the game was released I sort of like lost myself in it and still I am lost to this day but of course I just love Planet Zoo without Planet Zoo I don't see myself starting this channel uh, this and probably pandemic because I was a bit Board, <laughs> to be honest, but also uh, I never considered myself a creative person uh, until I started actually creating those videos and creating those habitats. I didn't have the artistic skills before. Uh, I was really bad at art projects at my school. I remember always uh, when we had some, you know, assignments to do at home from art projects, like to draw something or I just you know do a painting or a sculpture or something I always remembered asking my mom to do it because <laughs> oh my god I don't know I don't believe that I'm like uh, confessing to it here on YouTube but my mom loves art and she's really good at it she likes to draw she likes to paint and so on uh, she often does it in her free time so she was like really happy to do it for me and so yeah all my art assignments uh, during the primary school and the middle school were made by my mom and I always got the best grade my teacher loved them <laughs> and I was just you know not being honest with the teacher and, and right now I feel kind of bad but then I was like I wouldn't need the art in my life probably so those skills are irrelevant for me uh, I rather focused on biology classes because those are my favorites than you know sit and home and paint and my mother was so so happy to do it for me so yeah I didn't consider myself a creative pe person at all and Planet Zoo just I don't know unleashed something in me that now I cr like enjoy creating those things that you can see me creating right now so I am so so grateful for this game and grateful for the community and for you guys that watch my videos that comment after all of the, under all of those videos uh, because without Planet Zoo without YouTube I wouldn't have you so yeah this is probably my favorite thing of all of this that came to me with this game that this gave game gave me so I will forever be grateful for that uh, so yeah this is for sure a very special day for me the Planet Zoo anniversary because uh, yeah the three years ago something very big came into my life and stayed there and I think will stay uh, on uh, for much longer because I am not going anywhere probably one day the support for Planet Zoo will like stop like they will stop releasing those DLCs of course we are hoping for Planet Zoo 2 but we can never be sure uh, but it will stay for me I know it will stay for me because right now I don't have any other game that I love this much of course I also love the Jurassic World Evolution 2 I love Prehistoric Kingdom but I always uh, will love the most like building the real zoo with the real animals uh, that brings so much realism that brings so much creativity uh, I love zoos I love visiting zoos and so on and bringing them and to the computer like building it myself this will always have a special place in my heart so yeah i just love planet zoo i really do i know that many people have some issues with the game i know that you know we have tons of things that we know that could be improved and so on but still i love this game so much and i hope you guys love it too because I think that the love for this game is something that really brings this community together. This is something why you continue to watch those videos, why you continue to comment under those videos, those really nice and beautiful things that you tell me. This is all because we enjoy this game so much and yeah, I am so so grateful for it. 
Okay, but let's go back to today's video because I am drifting off topic so, so much. So, as you guys can see on the screen, we are uh, sort of almost done with the outdoor uh, area for uh, the wombats. Of course, I wanted to add some terrain variations not to make this uh, habitat so flat. So, I again added those terrain ledges or terraces that we've been adding recently, uh, again using the stalagmites. Uh, I also added some stalagmites like that were uh, upside down so those are the stalagmites or tights or you know what I mean uh, so that only like the top part is sticking out and they create really nice uh, like rocks simply and they look really cool uh, and of course I added tons and tons of plants to this habitat I wanted to make it look a bit more like dry like grassland uh, inspired kind of thing uh, so uh, you'll see a lot of like yellowish colors in there I didn't include all the planting because it was so much work and I didn't want to make this video too long as always uh, but you will uh, see me adding some of those uh, plants for sure also I added decal pieces of course those are the digging animals again so I wanted to add some the sand and some dirt for the texture so it just looks like they are a bit digging through this habitat I also added some different you know uh, like uh, details like some branches like uh, some dead roots and stuff like that unfortunately I had to delete some of them so you won't see uh, all of those things in the cinematics because the traversable area of the wombat is bad <laughs> simply I was so amazed by the traversable area of for example, raccoons, the skunks, the foxes, that I sort of, you know, uh, I didn't check it and I just assumed that the traversable area of the wombats must be also really amazing. So I added tons and tons of details to the small habitats and then I just sent over the wombats inside here and they couldn't walk anywhere. <laughs> so I had to delete so many things. I was so frustrated. Also, you will see me, uh, you know, adding the small doors inside of the indoor part of the habitat and they couldn't use them at all so in the cinematics they'll be much much bigger I also covered the paths with the concrete pieces to uh, make this whole like pavement in here like cohesive and nice and I created some planters using those uh, tiny rocks I added some plants in there uh, to make it look a bit more like interesting and nice looking and right now I am uh, beginning the work on the shelter so the shelter will be in fact like an indoor area for the wombats that will have a huge window and the guests will be able to observe them uh, when they are inside uh, we are still building in temperate biome so I can imagine that in colder days the wombats will be just enclosed in there so the guests that will be visiting the zoo despite the uh, cold weather will still be able to see them uh, and behind this like uh, guest area where they can see the animals there's always also a small like indoor uh, like backstage area where is like a small holding pen for the wombats and also some stuff like shelves and tools and so on uh, so yeah this is what I'll be creating right now uh, I was inspired here by one of the habitats from the Warsaw Zoo and this is the giant anteater habitat they also have like this indoor area with this huge window where you can go and observe them if they are inside of their uh, shelter so uh, yeah, this is what I was going for. Uh, this building will be very like white. <laughs> this was inspired by the real wood building. I still don't know how I feel about this color. I sort of like it, but it's like uh, unlike anything other that we have in this zoo, we don't have any white buildings like this. So I don't really know if it fits. It looks nice, but uh, this building is a bit like a eye catcher, I think. This is the term, something that you just have to look at because your eyes just naturally go into that direction. I don't know if you guys get what I'm saying at all, but <laughs> yeah, this color is something new for me, uh, but I actually like it. Like, tell me definitely down in the comments what you think about it. Should I change it or not? Does it look nice or not? Um, but yeah, this is something that I went for and I kind of like it. 
I must say that I have never seen a wombat myself in any of the zoos that I've been to. They didn't have wombats. Uh, so I was sort of like guessing how the wombat habitat should look based by the pictures and so on. So I hope that it makes sense. Uh, I will actually have a chance to see a wombat this month because in two weeks I will be going with my friends to Copenhagen uh, for a weekend. Uh, so I cannot wait for that and I actually hope hope I will have some time to visit the Copenhagen Zoo. It is like a smaller zoo, so I hope that I'll have like an, uh, two hours or something. Of course, I will cover the entire trip on my Instagram story, so make sure to follow me there. Uh, but they actually have one, but so this is very exciting. And actually, my trip to Copenhagen and to the Copenhagen Zoo will be super useful and super inspiring to me when it comes to my future collaboration with Zoof and Leader because we'll be building a zoo in Denmark uh, and it will be inspired by Danish architecture. So this is just perfect and it wasn't planned. Like uh, my friends asked me if I, if I want to go to Copenhagen for a weekend and I was like, yes, let's go, let's go. This is perfect for me. So uh, yeah, I am very happy about this trip and I am hoping to visit the Copenhagen Zoo and see the wombats myself. So as I told you guys, I never saw them and I hope uh, they won't be sleeping <laughs> because they sleep during the day uh, hidden somewhere usually so uh, I hope to see one but if he'll be sleeping it's of course okay for me uh, but yeah this zoo seems really beautiful so I am very excited about that by the way, when it comes to the collaboration, the first episode should be out uh, this weekend. So I hope you guys are excited. Uh, we are doing our best to upload the first video. Uh, I'm, not, I'm not sure if it will be out on Friday or on Saturday, but keep your eyes out on the first video. This will be amazing, I can already tell you. So I am super about, uh, excited about it. So yeah, not revealing any more secrets. I just hope you guys will watch Watch it! So as you guys could see, I use the same rock formation inside of this uh, shelter or this building and I also added small like elevated planters in there, of course some hay bedding, some rocks, I unfortunately need to, needed to delete some of them because of the traversable area and I also will show you a bit of creating the backstage area. What I also wanted to tell you guys is that I think in my raccoon video I told you guys that while I am building I am often watching uh, like other creators and their videos on Planet Zoo and on Jurassic World Evolution 2 and so on. But recently I sort of like realized that I probably watched everything there is on YouTube so I had to find something else and there is something that I would really like to recommend you guys if you are building and you know would like to I don't know listen to something at the same time uh, to know more about the animals to learn some fun facts and also learn about zoos and they roll and you know learn about I don't know uh, the habitat design a bit. Uh, I really like recommend you the podcast that you can, for, uh, for example, find on Spotify. And there is one podcast that I really like to listen to, uh, and it is done by iHeartRadio. So, and it is called an Amazing Wildlife a San Diego Zoo podcast. So, if you are interested in those topics, I definitely recommend it. Of course, they want to make it like friendly for all the you know listeners from the ones that know something about animals and. The the ones that don't know anything so uh, they for example explain what the marsupial is and so on but they also give us some really nice amazing facts about the animals uh, so I really re recommend it. And when it comes to the fun facts about the animals let me give you guys some facts about the common wombat. There are three different species of wombat. Those are the common wombat that we have in the game, also known as bare-nosed wombat, the southern hairy-nosed wombat, and the northern hairy-nosed wombat. All three species live in, of course, in Australia, including the island of Tasmania, and they live in variety of different habitats, including mountains, forests, and grasslands. 
Wombats aren't as small as you may think. An adult wombat usually grows up to a meter long, the same as medium-sized dog. They can weigh up to 40 kilograms and have wide, strong feet, which are great for digging. Wombats are mostly nocturnal. Uh, they spend nights foraging for food or digging new tunnels, entrances or exits for their ever-expanding burrows. They are herbivores, so most of their time uh, is spent grazing or native grasses. Wombats can run at the speed up to 40 km per hour. Uh, they can move surprisingly quickly when they need to and they can sustain this speed for up to 90 seconds. There are even reports of humans being knocked over by charging wombats. Wombat poo is cube-shaped. Wombats often mark their territory using their poo and so scientists believe that the square-sided shape is designed to stop the poo from rolling away, ensuring the smelly signals stay put. During the bushfires, wombat burrows become places of shelter for many other animals. Wombat burrows, known as warrens, can be huge. Those underground homes can contain tunnels over 200 meters long. During the bushfires, the tunnels stay cool, offering protection from the flames. Rock wallabies, skinks, or even little penguins have been seen using wombat warrens to escape fires or hide from predators. And that is all when it comes to the fun facts about the Wombas. Those are really amazing animals and I am very happy that they were added to the game. We don't have too many Australian animals, so every time we get one, I am very, very happy. Uh, especially that I plan to add the entire Australian section to the Desert Adventure Park when we'll be done with the, uh, with the African section. Uh, so the more animals we will have to add in there, the better. So the wombats will have their own new habitat in the zoo for sure. So as you guys could see, I've been working on this uh, house for the wombats. We added the roof uh, using the twilight pieces. Also those uh, like wooden beams that are on the facade of the buildings are from the twilight pack. And we also added the gutters. This is something that I often forget about and here I really wanted to add them. We also added like a skylights, but I sort of uh, forgot to uh, click record <laughs> when I was uh, adding them. So you wouldn't want to see the footage of me adding actually those pieces and that was basically it when it comes to the new uh, house in our zoo in the house for wombats i also added some deco pieces on the floor on the concrete panels to make it look a bit more used and dirty and what i will also do at the end of the speed build i will build a small planter because i just felt like this area next to the window looked a bit more like empty so i wanted to to add something there and I decided to build a custom planter and add some plants in there. And this is basically all that I have for you today, guys. I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did and you are not subscribed to my channel, please consider to do so with a subscribe button down below. Give this video a big thumbs up if you enjoyed it, ring the bell if you want to be notified every time I upload a new video, and of course comment down below if you enjoyed today's habitat build and tell me what has been your favorite habitats from all the habitats that we've built for the new Twilight Pack animals. Did you like the Wombat one the most? Did you like the, I don't know, Red Fox or maybe Raccoon or maybe a Bat House? Uh, tell me down below. I would love to hear what you guys liked the most. If you like to support the channel a little bit extra and get access to really cool perks such as custom giraffe emojis, members only community posts and members only discord chat, uh, you may do it with the join button down below. Uh, thank you guys so much for watching, have a wonderful day and I'll see you in the next one. Bye guys!